When you're working on your computer, you have all kinds of preferences. You have system preferences, you have application preferences, but you also have finder preferences, and that's where we are. So if you see the word finder up here, if you don't, just click on the desktop. Click on finder and go down to preferences right here. Now in finder preferences, you have four areas. Number one is general. Now you may notice something about my desktop. There are no drives or anything there. They're all gone. Now the reason being is if you set up a new drive from a clean install without any previous preferences for it to figure out, this is typically what it does. And sometimes people go, well, where are my hard drives, man? I know they're around somewhere. Well, if you come in to find your preferences, you can click here and get all your internals. Now I'm working on a new Mac, the ones that are like the cylinder, and there's only one drive inside that thing. It's a RAM drive. There are no other internal drives. So if I go external, I can see those. Those are my external drives. Do you have any CDs or DVDs or connected servers? I usually leave all of those on, but the question then begs itself, if none of those are on, let's go back for a second. How do I get to anything? Some people do work this way because they don't like the clutter. Well, if you go down to your dock, on the very left-hand side, you're going to see this icon right here. That icon has been on Mac for the last 100 years. That's the Finder. Now, if you click it, even though all of this stuff is not there, it's all over here. So if I do want to get into a drive, I can do it right here. Now, I would rather have my drives open and be able to double-click on them. But just because they're not visible on the desktop does not mean you can't get to them. Let me go ahead and close that and turn those back on. Now, I did a new Finder window. That's this button down here. When you do a new Finder window, what do you want to see up front? You want to see everything? That's a lot of stuff. Would you rather see maybe just your desktop or maybe your primary hard drive or something else? It's up to you. But the default is all my files. Do you want to open your folders and tabs instead of new windows? And we're going to talk more about that later, but that's where you change the option. And I do like spring loaded. If you've never really thought about what that is, let me show it to you. If I come over here and open up this drive and let me go into my desktop over here, let's say that this file right here, I want to move into another drive. So I drag it over, but as I'm dragging it over, I say, oh, well, the drive's not open. And once it's open, I have to get into a particular folder. So I have to stop, put it back, and start all over again. Not if you've got Spring Loaded on. Because if I come over here, watch Maverick's Drive, it'll kind of double blink like that, and it gets me into it. I can then move over to Users, and just hover. Move over to Me, and just hover. And it keeps opening these folders for me. Now, if this is where I want it to be, I can let go. If I come back out here, it closes everything back down again. I can put it back over here like I never wanted to do it in the first place. That's spring-loaded. I do like that feature. Now, you can use the space bar to open things immediately. So if I go to my Macintosh hard drive and press the space bar, it will give me an icon like this. But if I am working by dragging something over, you don't want to wait for that spring load to happen. You can press the space bar. It'll open it for you. Tags, we're going to get more into tags, if you will, when we start getting into searching. But tags allow me to tag my files or folders with one or more different colors. You have favorite tags down here. You can add your own by clicking here. Give it a name and give it a color right over here if that's something you want to do. Let me go ahead and get rid of that one. To add a tag is actually pretty easy. Let's say I go into generic welcome. And I want to add a tag to it so I can find it quicker. So if I right-click my mouse, one of my options down here are my tags. If I do add a tag, you can see it right there. But if I right-click again, I can add more than one if I want to. They help you identify things. You do have an option right here. It looks like a tag. And you can see them right up here. If you don't want them, you can press the delete key, or you can add more just by clicking up here. Now, the nice thing about tags is, number one, they make it easy for you to see something in a sea of stuff. You can point out that red one. You can see it. But the other thing is, if we scroll down here on the sidebar, these options here don't actually allow me to add a color. They allow me to search for them. So if I click red, watch what happens. It's going to give me everything that has a red tag. So it gives you the ability to search. And like I said, we will talk more about that later. 
Now, the favorite tags over here are the ones that you see over here, and they are the ones that when you right-click, you see here. You say, well, I don't know. You know, I use important a whole lot, and I don't see important there. So how do I get to important? Well, there's actually a couple of ways you can do it. But if you use it a lot, just simply come over here and drag it down and replace one of the ones that you never use. So it replaced yellow with important, but if I right-click, I then have important. Now you want to take it back to the way it was. Just take yellow right back down again. Tags can help you organize. They are good. Now sidebar, which of course is this area right here, you have all these things in the sidebar. I don't have movies, music, pictures, or my home. I have shared, I have devices, and I have recent tags. You can turn these on or off. However, if you want to add something into favorites, this area right over here, just drag it over. So you're working on a particular project, and there is a folder that you're always going to, and you want quicker access to it. So you drag it over. Put it in favorites, anywhere you want, but inside of favorites. Click it, and you got it. Now, if you don't want it anymore, drag it out and let go, and you see the little puff of smoke, meaning it hasn't been deleted. Basically, what it has, it's just been removed from your favorites. Now, one other thing about the sidebar, it's kind of important. If you touch or hover on favorites, you can hide them temporarily. You want to bring them back again, you come here and you say show the sidebar. Now, in advanced, show all file name extensions. Extensions are important to the computer, but not as important to me anymore. So I don't really need to see those. I leave that off. Do you want to be warned before you change an extension? Definitely. If I, I don't know, I'm not thinking what I'm doing, and I basically take a DOC file, which is a Microsoft Word document, and change it to PNG, which is a graphic, and it doesn't warn me, I'll never be able to open that document again until I get rid of that extension. So yeah, warn me on that. Do you want to be warned before emptying the trash? And do you want to securely empty your trash? Now, if you work for, I don't know, MI6 or, oh, the CIA, and all your stuff is really important, or maybe you just have some really important stuff that you don't want anybody accidentally getting into, you can say secure. The problem with that is, if you do it here, it always securely empties your trash, and that can take a long time. Now, you have one more option here, performing a search where, and we'll talk more about that when we get into searches. But let me show you that delete thing again, or that removing trash. Let me get out of here. If I go down to my dock, on the far right, we have a brand new trash can. Isn't that nice? And if I click on it, it will show me what's in trash. If I right-click on the trash, one of my options is empty trash. And if I click it, it's going to say, because I said, warn me, are you sure you want to do this? And say, well, yeah, I guess I am. And you do it. Now, you can't undo this action, but there are programs out there that can recover stuff from trash if it's a regular trash day. Okay, you're just taking out the trash. Let me cancel out this for a second. If this particular batch of trash is secure, you really want to securely empty it. If we go back up to the word finder, you do have an option here to do it. Well, let me show you a trick. Number one, if I come down here and I right click, if I hold the option key down, before I click empty trash, it won't ask me. It will do a regular trash dump. But if I hold down the option key and the command key, now sometimes we call the command key on a Mac an Apple key, but the command key, watch the word empty, secure. So just by holding down the option and the command key, you get it when you need it. And if you just hold down the option key, when you click, it will just do it. So a lot of the options that we're talking about, we have ways, and we'll learn these more as we go through the operating system, but we have ways to counter what we originally did by holding down a modifier key. There you go. Those are your finder options. Remember where they are. They're located in the finder right there.